Brothers and sisters in Christ, today I bring you a message that not only should stir our souls, but also open our eyes to a spiritual reality that is too often forgotten. Purgatory. How many times have we thought of our dear departed ones and wondered where they are, what they are experiencing in the afterlife? The scriptures and the experiences of saints offer us a deep vision of this place of purification. But today I want to focus on a privileged witness who had extraordinary encounters with the souls in purgatory. Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. Her life is a beacon that illuminates the dark path of purgatory, revealing to us the importance of prayer and charity for the departed. Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, best known for her devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, was also one of the chosen souls to whom the Lord allowed to see and experience the sufferings of the souls in purgatory. These souls are not forgotten by God, but are purified, prepared for the beatific vision. They suffer indeed, but they do so with the hope of redemption. Let's listen together to one of her most touching testimonies. While I was before the Blessed Sacrament on the day of Corpus Christi, a person suddenly appeared before me, entirely enveloped in flames whose burning penetrated me so deeply that I felt as though I were burning with them. The pitiful state in which they showed me they were in purgatory brought me to tears. They told me they were the Benedictine priest who had once heard my confession and had ordered me to receive Holy Communion. To reward him for such a valuable piece of advice, God had allowed him to come to me so that I could relieve his pains by offering all that I could do and suffer for three months. I promised him this after obtaining permission from the superior. He told me that the first cause of his great suffering was having preferred his own interest to the glory of God, due to excessive attachment to his reputation. The second, a lack of charity towards his brethren. And the third, his excessive natural affection towards creatures, which he had expressed during spiritual conversations, something that greatly displeased God. What does this revelation tell us, dear brothers and sisters? It's not enough to appear good outwardly. It's not enough to be religious on the surface. God looks at the heart, and even small lacks of charity and too many attachments can delay our entrance into heaven. This Benedictine suffered for his sins, but God, in his infinite mercy, gave him a path to redemption. Saint Margaret teaches us the same, that every act of charity, every prayer, every suffering offered with love can bring relief to the souls in purgatory. Let's continue with her extraordinary testimony. It would be difficult for me to describe how much I suffered during those three months. He never left me, and it seemed as though the side where he was standing was burning with a flame of fire, with such acute pain that I almost continually groaned and wept. The superior, out of compassion, gave me severe penances, especially of discipline because the external pains and sufferings that I bore out of charity greatly relieved the other sufferings that divine love imprinted on me as a small taste of what it makes those poor souls suffer. At the end of the three months, I saw him again in a completely different way. Filled with joy and surrounded by glory, he was going to enjoy eternal happiness. He thanked me and told me he would protect me before God. I had fallen ill, but since my suffering disappeared with his, I was immediately healed. See, brothers, how charity not only purifies the souls in purgatory, but also heals those who practice it. Saint Margaret shared in that soul's pain, and in the end, she experienced the joy of liberation. It is a powerful reminder to each of us. We are called to pray for the dead, offer masses, sacrifices, and acts of penance to alleviate their sufferings. And God, in His goodness, will never fail to reward those who perform such works of mercy. Here is another revelation the saint received. This time it concerns not just any soul, but a religious sister. Once I saw in a dream a religious sister who had died long ago, who told me that she was suffering greatly in purgatory, and that God was making her endure an incomparable pain namely, the sight of a relative of hers who had fallen into hell. 
I awoke to these words, overwhelmed with such great anguish that it seemed as though she had passed her sufferings on to me. I felt my body broken to pieces, so much so that I could barely move. But since one should not believe in dreams, I did not pay much attention to it. Yet she forced me to take it seriously, even though I didn't want to. She insisted so much that she gave me no peace, continually saying, Pray to God for me. Offer your sufferings united to those of Jesus Christ to relieve mine. Give me everything you do until the first Friday in May, when you will receive communion for me, as I did with the superior's permission. But my anguish increased so much that it oppressed me, and I could find no relief or rest. Obedience made me retire to rest, but as soon as I lay down in bed, it seemed as though she was beside me, saying these words, Here you are, comfortably lying down in bed. Look at me lying in a bed of flames where I suffer intolerable pains. She showed me that horrible bed, which makes me shudder every time I think of it. For the mattress was made of sharp, fiery points that pierced her flesh. She told me it was because of her laziness and negligence in observing the rules and her infidelity to God. My heart is torn apart with burning iron combs, and this is my most cruel torment for the thoughts of murmuring and criticism in which I indulge against the superiors, and my tongue is eaten by worms as a punishment for the words I spoke against charity and for having broken silence, my mouth is completely ulcerated. Oh, how I wish that all souls consecrated to God could see me in this horrible torment. If I could make them feel the greatness of my sufferings, and those prepared for those who live negligently in their vocation, without a doubt, they would behave very differently, observing their duties with exactness, and would guard against the faults that make me suffer so much. This sister gives us a terrible but necessary image of the sufferings of purgatory. How many consecrated souls, who have given their lives to God, later allowed themselves to be dragged down by spiritual laziness and negligence? How many of them, just like us lay people, have sinned with their tongues, failing in charity, murmuring, and criticizing? Yet this testimony also reminds us that there is hope, that even after death, God offers a path of purification. There is no despair in purgatory. There is pain, yes, but also the certainty of being loved and awaited in the kingdom of heaven. This sister doesn't just ask for prayers for herself, but for all the souls who, like her, suffer and repent of their sins. Brothers, in these testimonies, there is not only fear of judgment, but above all a call to love. God loves us so much that he always gives us a way of redemption, even after death. But we, who are still alive, have a great responsibility to pray and offer sacrifices for our dear departed ones, for those who are still atoning for their sins in purgatory. If you care about the souls of your loved ones, if you want to learn more about how our prayers can alleviate the sufferings of those in purgatory, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. Not only to stay updated on future videos, but to become part of a community of prayer and faith, united in the desire to do good not only for ourselves, but also for the souls who await our intercession. May God bless you and grant us the grace to be instruments of peace and mercy for all those who are still walking toward the eternal light.